If you are visiting our channel for the first time, please subscribe first to get the latest updates. Hello everyone. Today we are going to see how you can find the domain and range of the inverse functions as we have already seen what are inverse functions and how you can find the inverse functions. So we will start with the uh, concept of the inverse function, a short overview so that we can have a concept how you can find the domain and range of the inverse functions as compared to the given functions. As we have already seen in our previous lecture that if you are given with the function y is equal to f of x then f inverse will be the opposite function of the, the f inverse will be opposite will go in the opposite direction and we will have to do all the operations in opposite direction as compared to the f of x so x will f inverse will be like this so this is basically the representation of the function and f uh, um, f function and its inverse now looking at this uh, diagram you can say that here we have the domain of f as domain of f as the, the domain of f depends on the value of x or you can say that the value of x represents the domain of f and this is the range of f as y represents the or the value of y represents the range of f so this was the range, domain and range of the normal function the function that is given but what about the f inverse in case of f inverse as everything is in everything got inverted or we are going into the opposite direction or in the reverse direction so we can say that the domain and range will also be domain and range will also be opposite to the given function so if domain of f is x then in case of f inverse it will become range of f inverse and it, the range of f becomes the domain of f inverse and that's all about the domain and range it means if you have the domain and range of a given function you can easily find the domain and range of inverse functions by changing their position that is the domain of m f becomes the, becomes the range of f inverse and the range of f becomes the domain of f inverse so by keeping this uh, this uh, concept in mind let's have an uh, example so that we can have the concept that how you can find the domain and range of the inverse function if you are given with a function so let's have an example if you are given with the function like f of x is equal to under root x plus 2 now you need not to find its inverse in order to find the domain and range you just need to find the domain and range of the given function and then we can easily find the domain and range of the inverse from there. So, as we have already seen in our previous lectures that how you can find the domain and range of the square root function. For this purpose, you have to use one condition that is, condition that is required for radical functions is x plus 2 should be greater than and equal to 0. So this is the condition. Why this is the condition? Because we have a radical sign and an, under the radical sign we cannot have a negative value that is less than 0 that will make it an imaginary number that will not be included in the domain. Okay. So that's why we have put this condition x plus 2 greater than and equal to 0 and it means x should be greater than and equal to minus 2. So this is the restriction on the value of x that x should be greater than and equal to minus 2. So keeping this in mind, we can find its range as, its domain as, domain is equal to domain of f of x is equal to minus 2 to plus infinity. So I have used the square bracket with minus 2 because of the equality sign here that x should be greater than and equal to minus 2 and it goes to plus infinity. So this is the domain of f of x. Now what about the range? As the range depends on the value of x, so if we start putting value from minus 2 into the given function as f of x is equals to under root x plus 2 and if I'll put the minimum value that is shown in the domain that is minus 2 as other than minus 2 that is less than minus 2 that is minus 3 minus 4 we cannot put as it will give you with the imaginary number. That's why we'll start from minus 2. 
if I'll put a here, it will become minus 2 plus 2 equals to 0. So the first number that comes into the well into the range of f of x will be 0. So what will be the domain? Then what will be the range? The range will be range of f of x is equals to 0 to plus infinity. So this is the range of f of x. Now once you find the domain and range of the given function, you can easily have the domain and range of the inverse function. Now if we talk about the domain of f inverse of x, what it will be? As we have already seen that in the inverse function it will be inverted that is the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain. The domain of f inverse of x will be 0 to plus infinity. And the range of f inverse of x is equals to minus 2 to plus infinity. So, this is about the domain and range of the given function. So, this is how you can find the domain and range of the inverse functions by just first finding the domain and range of the given function and just put the and just uh, uh, change their position in case of the inverse functions. So, we deduce at the end it is this, our deduction is range of f is equals to domain of f inverse and domain of f is equals to range of f inverse. So, by keeping this in mind, you can easily find the domain and range of the inverse function. So, that's all from today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe our channel math.com for more updates. Thank you.